In this segment, Hakeem Bella Osagi reveals how lessons learned from failure in business provided a foundation for his success in becoming recognized by Forbes magazine as one of the wealthiest men in Africa. The world is changing at an incredibly rapid space. Nothing that I say to you today can possibly be accurate because the world is going to change in ways that are so fundamental that I cannot even conceive of how different that world is going to be. You will need to use your imagination to contemplate how that world will be. You will need to think for yourself. You will need to be agile. You will need to be able to move according to shifting circumstances. Because if you simply listen to anybody, however clever he may appear to be, he will not be able to tell you about the pace of change that you are going to see. And therefore, the first message that I want to give to you all is that there cannot be any success in your lives without the willingness to accept change, the willingness to adapt to new circumstances, and the willingness to conceive and live with what you regard as inconceivable. I left the government in 1986 and set up a petroleum consulting company. At that time, entrepreneurship was not regarded as something that one should do. My generation in Nigeria worked in large companies. You rose to the top of the large companies or you became a respectable professional. So the idea of setting up a consulting company was regarded as strange and bizarre. You must be able to live with uncertainty, knowing that you will never have the complete proof that it will succeed, but at the same time, having the confidence that whatever new problems come about, you are able to react. It is not, it is not usually in life that, is the, that the problem, or any specific issue is the problem, it is how you react to that problem that counts. And your mind can make that problem large, or it can make it small. But your ability to react to that problem is what counts. The consulting firm was a success. In fact, it was an extraordinary success. Not because I had planned it, and I have to be very honest with you, I think the best way to describe it was that I had stumbled upon it. After that great success, I had my first failure. And that was a finance house that I set up called KMC. Now I have to be very honest, KMC was not just a failure, it was a complete and totally deserved failure on my part. And as it was failing, what was passing through my mind was some of those lectures in finance and accounting <laughs> that I had taken less seriously than I should have. In fact, I've often wondered why, looking back, since I hated accounting and finance, why I even thought about setting up a finance house. <laughs> Seems very obvious now, <laughs> but at the time, it looked like a wonderful opportunity, and I had one or two friends of mine who were going to run the company, and it was run into the ground. And I lost a large amount of money. But that failure was good for me. It's, there's some lessons that are only learnt by failure. But I learned the lessons from that failure, 
One was assemble the best possible team to work with you, not necessarily the people that you know the best, but the guys who are the best at that work. Secondly, you must be involved in a business, even if you don't work there full time. You must be a more active board member. You've got at board meetings to confront difficult issues and not to be quiet because you don't want to ruffle feathers when there's a strategy that is taking place that you feel is wrong. And after that, that lesson in mind, I started my second, my next venture, which was a securities trading outfit and the hostile takeover of the largest, second largest bank in Nigeria. Those two were complete successes. But they would never have happened if I had not had the complete failure of the finance house. In addition to that, one of the things that helped me was a note that was sent to me by an old professor. He had heard about FSDH, about KMC and my failure. He sent me an old note and that was meant to guide me. And I think he, the point he was trying to make was that do not think about failure. Go ahead, assuming that you will succeed. And that is the only way you can proceed in life. I will share it with you. He was a Roman historian. So the saying that he gave is a little bit um, uh, unusual, but uh, let me say it as, as it says, as it goes. Now, it's a story about a great general, and he is with Caesar, Roman emperor, and they're about to go to a battle. And before that battle, Caesar, great as he was, as happens before these great occasions, was a little bit nervous. So Caesar says to the general, he says to him, my brother, how do you think tonight is going to go? Because the battle was in the afternoon. Do you think that tonight we are going to sleep the lovely sleep of victory? Or do you think that we are going to sleep the deep and cold sleep of death? Will the goddess of fortune smile upon us tonight? And will the goddess of good luck lie with us today? And the general replied as follows. One, the first bit, I guess, is a general speaking to an emperor. And I guess you have to say this. He says, Caesar, you will live for a thousand years. <laughs> so I'd like you to ignore that bit. <laughs> and he says, as for me, I do not think about success or failure. I think of only one thing, and that is, at the end of tonight, by my fighting, by my will, I would have earned the praise of Caesar and the respect of my worst enemies. And then he stopped there, which meant, irrespective or whether at the end of this battle, I am dead or I am alive, I will fight this battle to the very best of my abilities and I will be respected. And I must say, I very much loved this saying. It was very encouraging to me because it stopped me from fixating on the issue, am I going to succeed? Am I going to fail. And it put me on the path of saying that I'm just going to fight one hell of a battle on whatever I seek to do. The rest is up to circumstances. 
And if I fail, I learn from that failure.